So I'm going to show you a clip in this sermon. Now, keep in mind, they have the comments turned off now. So you cannot see the comments in this video anymore. I wonder why. Well, I'm about to show you why. Let's listen to this clip by Andy Stanley. This was just a few days ago. He's about to say something about Jesus that is very disturbing, and I would say blasphemy. Howdy, y'all. I'm Brylan. You know, growing up as a 90s kid, I remember my dad would always have a preacher on the radio when we'd be driving in the car, and I can still hear their voices, you know, the likes of Chuck Smith and Chuck Swindoll, who Chuck Swindoll, by the way, is one of my all-time favorite Bible teachers and still is to this day. I love that faithful man of God. I'm always surprised when anybody takes time to listen when I talk. And Greg Laurie was on the radio a lot. There was a lot of Calvary Chapel teachers, but, you know, there was also Charles Stanley. Charles Stanley had a huge presence on the radio back then and you know Charles Stanley has a son his name is Andy Stanley and Andy Stanley is one of the largest mega church pastors in the wait, wait the largest no I mean he's not the largest mega church pastor <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't mean I mean he's one of the largest pre wait how do I say this Andy Stanley is the pastor of one of the largest mega churches in the country and he is very influential and that can be a very dangerous thing now i'm very careful when i use the word false teacher however andy stanley lately has been saying many many things that i don't know what else to call it at this point you know andy stanley goes as far to downplay the virgin birth of christ if somebody can predict their own death and then their own resurrection i'm not all that concerned about how they got into the world because the whole resurrection thing is so amazing. And in fact, you should know this, that Christianity doesn't hinge on the, true, the truth or even the stories around the birth of Jesus. The Daily Grace Company is a wonderful company. They have Bible study guides. They have pens and highlighters. They have journals. They have prayer cards, verse cards, Bibles. They just put out their most requested Bible study ever. And it's on the book of Esther. If you use our link in the description below, it helps us out. Uh, it costs you nothing, but it will help us out. Hey, would you consider hitting that subscribe button and being a part of this community with us? I would love to hear from you on a regular basis. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up button as well. You know, when you like this video, YouTube pushes it out to more people and it would really help spread this message. You know, Andy Stanley is the type of preacher that I like to call the Tony Robbins preacher. They are very much driven by motivational speeches. They like to take maybe a scripture and if they're feeling extra spiritual, then they'll use two scriptures in a single sermon. You know, Andy Stanley never actually preaches through the Bible because Andy Stanley doesn't believe that the Bible is actually, I don't know, this old book is not really worth anything anymore. We don't really even need the Bible. In fact, Andy Stanley is annoyed at the fact that so many Christians hold the Word of God with such a high regard. And <laughs> he doesn't like that very much. Keep this in mind before I play this clip I'm about to show you. This is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is breathed out by God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete and equipped for every good work. The Bible is literally God breathed. It is the very words of our creator and it's profitable for all these things. Andy Stanley is afraid that the Bible is just it's getting in the way. No, we don't believe in the resurrection because the Bible tells us so. And the question is simply this, but Andy, okay, I get all that. But Andy, the Bible is how we know about the resurrection. Actually, it's not. That when we preach and teach, instead of citing the Bible, we just drop back and say, John, an eyewitness of the resurrection says, Paul, who steps onto the pages of history as someone who hated the church says, Jesus said and again it, it's just a different way it's a different approach and, it, and it's I, I, and obviously it's more accurate I, second timothy 3 16 through 17 says all scripture is theonostos it's breathed out by god 
So the, the origin of scripture is from God. The Holy Spirit of God carries people along to write what they write. And it's interesting. So why don't we just cite the me, people that were carried along? Well, let me just let me just point point this out that in in the, the time of the apostles, um, after Jesus' death and resurrection and ascension, the apostle Peter refers to the writings of the apostle Paul that were happening in his day, and he says in Second Peter uh, three sixteen, he says uh, talking about things that Paul is writing that are difficult to understand. He says, there are some things in them that are hard to understand, which the ignorant and unstable twist to their own destruction as they do the other scripture. You can't start with the Bible says the Bible. I mean, you can. The Bible says the Bible says the Bible says. But here's the thing. Everybody else now knows what else the Bible says. It, it, it's So now I'm beginning to spit and match on the six-day creation, young earth, old earth, Levitical law, homosexuality. I mean, it's like, oh, gosh, you know, we're, the issue is who? is Jesus. That's the issue. And if you get that straight, the dominoes start falling in, um, you know, good directions for the most part. I think the only way we can get there, Andy, is by saying the Bible says. No, we, Bible, we don't have to say that. If I, if I could finish the thought, the Bible says that Jesus rose again from the dead. That's no, how it actually know. doesn't say that. That's how you know Jesus rose from the dead, because the biblical witness gives you that testimony that Jesus rose from the dead. Uh, that Bible is where you get the message that Jesus rose again from the dead. Both no, it's, it's not. <clears throat> well, explain, so that, Andy. explain that, Andy. Explain that. What do you mean by saying the Bible doesn't say that Jesus rose from the dead? Because the Bible doesn't say anything. John did. Moses did. David did. And that's in the Bible. Paul did. But it was only in the Bible once it got put in the Bible. That's incoherent. (laughs) To a person who says that he is a Christian but denies the inerrancy of Scripture, uh, I would say uh, several things. You, You are denying God's own claim for the Bible. You're you're denying what God, the Holy Spirit, who authored Scripture, says about Scripture. That all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. That every word is pure. That um, the the Scripture is God-breathed. Not only that, not only those explicit statements are you denying, but you're denying every time in Scripture it says, thus says the Lord. And then you're denying the overall superintending power of God over his revelation. Now, what that does essentially is say this. You are the judge of scripture. You've just made yourself the authority over the Bible. So you're going to be the one we have to trust to tell us what's true and what's not true in the Bible. You know, there are a lot of issues with what Andy Stanley teaches and how he teaches. That brings me to this point right here. Just recently, Andy Stanley gave a sermon. So I'm going to show you a clip in this sermon. Now, keep in mind, they have the comments turned off now. So you cannot see the comments in this video anymore. I wonder why. Well, I'm about to show you why. Let's listen to this clip by Andy Stanley. This was just a few days ago. And this is what's so problematic about Andy Stanley. And hear me, I'm for the for the for the moment. Don't hear me saying what I'm saying because it's necessarily true. Just hear me saying what I'm about to say because this is what was said. According to Jesus, good people don't go to heaven. So that's one of the issues with Andy Stanley right there is that he he, he says stuff like that. Don't don't actually hear me for what I'm about to say if it, if, because it's not true, but it is true. And it's this and it's a, it's the mind games behind his message. You know, he has to start certain things he's about to say like that. He has to basically give a disclaimer. What I'm about to say, who cares whether it's true or not or whatever, because he doesn't rely on the Bible. Therefore, he doesn't actually respect the ultimate source of truth. So, of course, he's not actually going to have ultimate truth to speak on. And you notice right here, he's about to say something about Jesus that is very disturbing. And I would say blasphemy. According to Jesus, it's the very opposite of what most people who believe there's a heaven actually think and believe. And the fact that Jesus didn't believe that good people go to heaven, that doesn't necessarily make it true. That's just what he taught. And that's what he said. And clearly it's what he 
believe. Do you hear the condescension here? So the point of this is that Jesus is teaching something that people actually don't inherently feel because a lot of people believe that if you're good enough, you'll go to heaven. He's trying to twist Jesus's words here and he's downplaying the truth that Jesus is speaking. You know, the truth that's in the Bible. And he's actually using words like it's what Jesus believed as if it's such a, it's just that. It's just what Jesus believed. It doesn't go any further than that. We can go ahead and leave that part out of it because it's just what Jesus believed and it doesn't make it true. You don't get any more heretical than that. You don't get any more blasphemous than that, than taking something Jesus said and saying it's just what he believed and it doesn't actually make it true. Andy Stanley's... <laughs> <laughs> Andy Stanley's made it very clear where he stands when it comes to the truth of God's word. Andy Stanley does not respect the word of God. And in fact, Andy Stanley believes that the word of God is a hindrance to Christianity. Instead of saying the Bible says we should, you know, we should tone that down a little bit because everybody already knows what the Bible says. We can't use it anymore. But hey, let me know your thoughts about all this in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you and hear your thoughts on this. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button and being a part of this community, I would love to hear from you on a regular basis. And also hit that thumbs up button. You know, it would really help you to push this video out to more people when you like it. So thank you for doing that. And hey, don't forget to go check out our merch. You can check out the link called Shop Our Merch in the description below. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.